Just a little over two months ago, I got a comment from Harshit Gola asking how to fill out missing data in columns within Alteryx. So I've got not one, not two, not three, but four different ways of doing this with Alteryx tools, and I'm going to run through them right now. Now, I've got a data set in here that I downloaded from the Chicago data portal, and that data set is based on abandoned vehicles in the city of Chicago. And the columns inside that data set are things like the date it was created, the status, uh, the completion date, service request numbers, license plate, make of the vehicle, color, uh, location, and how many days the vehicle has been reported as parked. In essence, how long has it been abandoned? A zip code and a street address. Okay, so that's what I've got within this data set. Now, what we're gonna focus on in this data set is how many days has the vehicle been reported as parked? So we're gonna say this parked days to keep it kind of short, or maybe abandoned days. That might be a little bit easier. So focusing on that column, you'll notice that there are several more than several actually, a lot of records that are quote unquote null in this data set, okay? So we want our goal in this analysis is to maybe estimate how many days or at least complete that column so we can run some sort of analysis on it. So I'm pulling in the data set. I've used the cache and run workflow option so that the data is cached. And I'm gonna use my standard pattern here, which is I'm gonna bring in an auto field tool so that I can get the field types, the data types of those fields, a select tool just so I can see what the different data types are that are coming in and sort of guarantee that the abandoned days is an actual number, which is correct. And then for simplicity purposes, I'm only gonna select the first 100 rows. So I'm using a sample tool from the preparation palette to just pull in the first 100 rows first 100 rows okay so the first way that we're going to do this is we're going to go and we are going to pull in a data cleansing tool that's on the preparation palette and the data cleansing tool can be found here the data cleansing tool allows us to select an individual column in this case i chose none first to clear them all out and then i just clicked on how many days the vehicle has been abandoned or parked and i'm going to replace null values with a zero. So when I look at the browse tool, you notice that all the nulls, this is what it used to look like, all the nulls are now zero. So that's method number one. Method number two, I can use a formula tool also found on the preparation palette, formula tool right there, and I can create an if statement, which is what I did here. It's a bit long, so I'm gonna expand it for you. And the if statement says if is null, which is another function, if the number of days parked is null, then I want to put in the current date and time difference between the completion date. And you'll notice that the completion date was a column within our data set. And we're going to say, tell me the number of days. That's what's in single quotes here. All right, else, if this field does contain a number, then we're just gonna report back that number. So let's go ahead and look. You'll see if we scroll over here, you'll notice that where it was blank before, so the third one was blank, now the third one has 2,043 days. Now, there's a bit of an issue here. Why are we going through each of these, right? Why do I want to show you this? There's pros and cons to each one of these. In the first example, I filled out a zero. So in essence, I don't know, so I'm just going to put a zero in there. And the second option using the formula tool, I'm sort of making maybe a hypothesis that says the number of days that the vehicle has been abandoned is the number of days that have elapsed between the completion date and today's date. Now that can be completely bogus, and likely it is. There's probably a better method of doing this, but it gives me an option to come to some sort of assumption about how many days I think have elapsed. And you'll notice they're quite large. So I would go back and I would change this to a different formula and a different calculation. All right, so that's option two. The third option, the third option here is to use the multi-row tool. The multi-row formula tool is also on the preparation palette. What this one lets us do is we can update an existing field or we can create a new field. In this case, I'm gonna update the existing one. So I select it from the drop down, and I'm gonna write another if statement. Now, the if statements 
<clears throat> inside the multi-roll tool are a little bit weird. It's helpful if you use the built-in functions and uh, you use things like the test here. You'll see that I have is null to test. I can also have some specialized functions in here as well. Um, I can have conditional ones, which is where I got the if statement from. If you double click on the if statement here, it'll automatically put it into the, the expression box at the bottom so you don't hand type it. Now, this expression box at the bottom doesn't have the type of IntelliSense or autocode that the formula tool has. Uh, so just be aware of that. It also doesn't color code it. You'll notice that. So there's no helpful hints here about whether you're doing it the right or the wrong way, except when you get to the bottom, you can click apply and see if it's functional. So there's a little bit of trial and error when you use this tool. The other thing that's interesting about this particular tool is I can navigate up and down my list of rows. And so what I'm doing here in this particular tool is I'm going to use the previous value as the value for the missing row of data. So what I've said is if the current row, the days the vehicle has been parked is null, then I'm going to back up to the previous row. This is row minus one. And how do I find that? If I go to variables, you'll see row minus one here. I can go ahead and choose row minus one days the vehicle has been parked and choose that value from my data set. OK, so any time that I encounter a null value, I'm just going to use the previous one. All right, so that's that option. If we go in and we look at the browse tool, you'll notice the third row in here was the one that was null, and so it just copied the 60 down, which reminds me a little bit of how Excel would work if you were going to copy the previous cell down. That's how this function would work here. The fourth and final way to do this is to use the imputation tool, and the imputation tool was actually specifically designed for this exact problem. So if you go to the preparation palette again, hover over the imputation tool and click on it, you notice it says update specific values in numeric data field with another selected value useful replacing null values. Well, that's exactly what I want to do. So we're going to drop that tool on. We're going to check the box next to the days that the vehicle has been parked. Notice if all was selected, I would choose none and just choose that one box. And we're going to say incoming value to replace. If it's null, I could also use a specific value. If it wasn't null, say it was zero and I wanted to replace it with a different value, I could do that. And we're going to compute the average. We also have the option of computing the median and the mode or using another specific value. These are very common imputation options. So I'm going to cal calculate the average, which means Altrix is going to go through that entire column and it's going to sum the column and then divide it by how many records are in that or rows are in that column and then give me an average. So when I look at my browse tool, you'll notice that for the missing values, I get an average of what that column was and it's for every single now. So it's 35.24 roughly for every single one. OK, so there you have it. Four different ways of doing this. Now, remember, there are pros and cons to each one. If you want to put zeros in there, is that really what you want? Do you want to calculate an average? Do you want to take the last value that it encountered? Maybe there's a reason why you want the previous one. If this is a time series data set, that could be a good reason to do it. So a lot of different pros and cons to it, but these are the four ways that I wanted to share with you. As always, I'm not going to ask you to like and subscribe. I'm going to ask you to share. Yes, share this content with other people. You don't have to like it. You don't have to subscribe to it, but share it out with other people who you think might enjoy this Alteryx content. I'll catch you on the next one.